back to fixing with friends. It's late, I have to make dinner, and I don't really care. So, this is your regularly scheduled reminder to make sure that you like the video. If you're enjoying it, subscribe. If you would like us to stay on YouTube, because YouTube has other plans, and those plans are putting ads in everyone's videos, unless we can get to a thousand subscribers, and then we can at least control where the ads go, how many ads there are, and perhaps even prevent ads from going on the videos a little bit longer. Uh, if that doesn't happen, we're just going to use other platforms, and we've already started. So, if you prefer other platforms, let us know down in the comments. So, what's in store for today? I don't know. Ask me when I have more energy. Back to you, me. Alright. So, we're going to put the steering bellows on today, because we didn't get to them last time. If we have time, I'm going to throw the stabilizer bar links on the rear end. Anyway. So, just put these earplugs in and then get to work. So the great thing about these wheels that came with the car is three of the four of them came with this handy feature of locking nuts. Most of the time I end up having to take them off with a adjustable crescent wrench, which is fun. Don't buy these. Not that I did. See these old non-vented rotors? Definitely not ideal for driving for long periods of time through the mountain. They heat up a little bit too much. So I'll check the pad life while we're here. So they're getting close to being worn out. There's probably about a third still left. So I should change them soon, but it's not hugely urgent. You can see better from this side. So the outboard brake pad has quite a bit of life left. The inboard one, I don't think you can actually see, but it has a fair bit less. All right. So this right here is the boot we're replacing. Uh, so we have to pull the tie rod ends off for that. As you can see, they could use a new boot. It's kind of just dissolved. I was told not to worry about it. I am worrying about it, so I'm going to replace them. Or I'm just going to get new tie rod ends. We'll see. Ideally, you preserve it, because if you have to, you can use them again. I mean, realistically, you don't have to replace them. It's just a secondary retainer, but I like to whenever I can. I should have grabbed the vice grips. That's what I'm talking about. The crown nut. All right, now I get to use my special tool that makes life a lot easier. There are other tools, these are just 
less likely to damage your time rod end. I also only had this on one, so it's just wasting air. Before removing the tie rod end, mark it. I prefer this method, it gives me a little bit more accuracy, but whenever you play with suspension and steering components, expect to do an alignment. To remove the tie rod end, you want to twist the locking nut towards the car and the tie rod end away from the car. Once you've got them loosened, just unscrew everything. Now this does usually take a decent amount of force, but you may find that if you're working on an old car, it's stuck or frozen together. And so all you need to do is fix it with fire. So when you're doing this, obviously be careful. You don't want to be heating up your brake line or burning anything or your cells. Take your time, only heat up the tie rod end and the nut definitely don't want to be that guy who set my car on fire and honestly at the time I knew the shop owner I didn't push the fact but at the end of the day any time a shop damages your car you have to be on them about it because it's it's nine times out of ten it's just negligence I was told well you know it had to be done that's really not the case um, you can be careful about these things you don't do a wheel alignment, back your back the customer's car into something, be like, you know, it happens during wheel alignments, it's just a risk of the wheel alignment. No, in a case like this, they could even buy a different tool, like the inductive heat coil that I used for the Mustang. You know, it costs a little bit of money, but then you never have to worry about setting something on fire, where the risk is significantly lower. So, yeah, if a shop damages your car, Make sure they pay for it or fix the damage. Alright, so I got it loose now, but it looks like it's going to rain, so I'm either going to have to work very fast, or uh, we're not going to get done today. It's still quite hot, but because I have gloves on, I have a couple seconds. Oh good. And on my watch. Again. Right loose, left tight. I have to look at the threads on the other side because it could be the same way or it could be the way you'd expect it to be. Alright, now we can cut this off, put the new one on. Maybe grease it if I'm lucky. It's starting to feel like tornado weather. That's working at least. The new one has zip dies on it. This one's got a clamp. And nothing on the outer side. So in the interest of avoiding this rainstorm and at least getting this one boot down, I have uh, just broken it. Watch as it still doesn't come off. So 
but right here is where it looked like it had cracked. Actually it looks okay, which is good. It just, I'm guessing, got a little bit of overspray from undercoating. Still gonna throw the new one on and hopefully re-grease this. You can see the teeth on the bottom there. So you know this is insufficient. Considering this side didn't even have a tie on it before, it's probably just fine. Save a lot of time using the correct size wrenches as opposed to two adjustable crescent wrenches. fitting from the tie rod end. I think I can grease it. I didn't grease the other side but I can always pull it off and do it again. Another time. But if you're wondering what a Zerk fitting is, it's that. I don't know if you can see it. You may also know it as a grease nipple.
I didn't have an impact driver with me, so I didn't take the lower pan off. If you have one, it say, would save a lot of time. If not, it didn't make sense for me to add the extra time of taking off and putting the pan back on. But if you don't want to fiddle around, definitely do that. So funnily enough, right when the sun came out, it finally started raining. So I covered everything up and then I just came back the next day to finish up. I don't know about you guys, but I feel safer with a clamp than with the zip ties. So I just tested moving the wheel in and out so that I could see if the bellows would come off. All right, so time to clean this tie rod in. All right, so these aren't perfect, but they are a lot cleaner than they were before and they're probably never going to be perfect. Not with the environment I have. Um, so we're gonna make some temporary boots out of this and some gloves. Yes, I'm recycling an old Ziploc bag that I cleaned thoroughly. Before I do that, I'm going to try and push the old grease out. Clean this up a tiny bit. Whoops. Hmm, I need three hands. It's not going to be the most durable boot ever, but it should work, which is what's important. Now, I could use a zip tie, but I've had enough of those today. For those of you wondering, a zip tie would indeed be better, but I'm not, I'm done with those. Now, before I snip this extra bit, I'm going to put some... Actually, no, I'm just going to fold it. I don't feel like grabbing the safety lenses. Alright. Who said I didn't like craft? They just have to be functional. Okay. And I will report in to let you guys know how well that actually worked.
like it wants a hug. So straighten the steering wheel. Make sure that's as centered as I possibly can get it. That's the episode. Next time we're jumping right back in with Cyclops and the Flipping Cars series. Another short video there. The next series we're going to be getting into pretty soon is with the Datsun. And there's a really big project that we did and that's uh, painting it. So we tried a budget painting exercise. I'll have to total how much it actually costed for you, but uh, I believe it was in the realm of two to three hundred dollars so it's a very cheap paint job it's going to be broken down into a lot of segments because I pull apart a lot of the car so you can see how that's done so when I was originally making it I was planning to have maybe just one kind of condensed video and do a quick time lapse for the paint but no there's so much that happened I'm going to show you the process of pulling things apart putting things back together all the different segments uh, and I'll try and partition them in a way that makes sense because there's just so much there and if I made it one video you would probably spend 10 hours watching it after I've edited it. I don't know. There's so much. Before I forget we hit 50 subscribers so thank you all for watching. We didn't start out with a lot which is fine because I'm not too keen on everyone I know watching these but uh anyway yeah thanks again and see you guys next time